How to make a vintage Bassett Lowe steam plant work again, part 9, the final steam test. What I'm doing at the moment is filling the tank, or not quite filling the tank, with methylated spirits. Methylated spirits is alcohol that's been coloured, and I think there's also something in there that makes you throw up if you drink it. But I presume that if you're a regular meth drinker, this doesn't apply. Health and safety warning, don't fill the tank too full, and don't drink the methylated spirits. I think it's also called denatured alcohol in the USA. This is a vaporising burner, I've covered it before in this series, and it's a great thing. You like these small wicks, the small wicks heat the top part of the burner, which heats up the methylated spirit in the burner itself, and once the vapour catches fire, the entire burner can be slid underneath the boiler to heat the water. It can take a couple of minutes before the burner starts working properly. So I'll take this opportunity to thank Alexander from the USA for his impression of me on his video about machining a part for a steam engine. I especially enjoyed the accent, which was a cross between Liverpool, Eastern Europe, with just a hint of the USA. Keep up the good work, Alexander. I'm following your rebuild of that massive engine in the waterworks. That's what I would call heavy engineering, unlike my engineering, which is very small and very feeble in comparison with yours. While I've been talking, one of the burners has started burning properly. This is a really good burner. Well, it is until you overfill the tank. If you fill the tank right to the top, then the burner heads flood and the entire bench goes up in flames, which is nice on a very cold day in the workshop. Anyway, here we go. The burner's going into position and it's only a matter of time now before I get some steam. It's a good idea to make sure there is sufficient water in the boiler before you put the fire underneath it. I'd already filled it to halfway, so while the boiler's raising steam, I'm taking this opportunity to put some more water into the boiler. This took me by surprise, with absolutely no pressure showing at all on the pressure gauge, the engine suddenly burst into life, and off it went. This really is a great little engine. I'm puzzled why the previous builder of the plant put this aluminium base on it, but I left it as it was to keep it original. So what about the dynamo? Well, the dynamo is a bit of a sore point. The way to fit it, in my opinion, is like this. So I'll leave this up to the new owner to decide how to fit it. As you can see, it's generating more than enough electricity to light this LED. But look at the speed the engine's having to run at to light the LED. This would wear the engine out in no time, so I'm going to leave this dynamo off the plant. I thank everyone who's taken the trouble to write in and ask me how much I want for this plant. But the answer is, it's not for sale. I'm going to actually give it back to the man who gave it to Simon Hudson at the steam workshop in the first place, because I feel that it's part of his childhood. When I first started making this video series, I commented on how horrible the paint was, and I received a comment from a viewer by the name of Adrian, who said, well, I painted it when I was 13, and Adrian's now in his 50s. So it was at that point that I decided that I would give the plant back to him once I'd finished it. In the middle of this test, I removed the burner temporarily, dropped the pressure, and fitted a silicone o-ring to the steam tap on top of the boiler because it was leaking. But as you can see, it is now steam tight. This old Bassett Loke steam plant has come back to life, and it's running very well. So that's it from me, I'm not going to say anything else. I'll just let the quality of this steam plant speak for itself. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.